Hey, I'm Grimgrim, and welcome to this video. I've just seen the new It, and while in all reality, this should really be Grin doing this video because he's actually read the novel, seen the original Tim Curry version, and does basically all of the horror-related stuff on this channel. Since he's currently chained to the writer's desk trying to meet some difficult deadlines, I figured I might as well do it instead. I mean, it makes sense, he's not seen the movie, and I have. So, I guess, take this as from the perspective of someone whose first exposure to It was this here movie. And so, It, a horror film about a supernatural clown who can transform into your biggest fears like a bullet, and every 27 years emerges in order to feast off of children before going back into hibernation. He's sort of like a bear, except he's a clown and he can transform and he's supernatural. So I suppose he's only really got the hibernation thing in common. But either way, the concept of the film no doubt already seems a lot more scary to some people than others, because there are people who are actually scared of clowns. I unfortunately am not, I wish I were as it would have made this film a lot scarier, but I've always been ever since Witchy World and the Joker, a really big fan of the distorted circus horror aesthetic. It always has a wonderful creepiness to it, and this film is no exception. Pennywise really is a fantastic and very well executed horror antagonist, and he's just oozing with the spooky. Speaking of spooky being a horror movie, the big question everyone's probably wondering is, is it actually a scary film? Well, yes and no. If you've never really seen a horror movie, or if you've not seen very many horror movies, I'm sure it is at least a little bit frightening. But as someone who's seen a few of them, it really wasn't that scary. There was never a point that Pennywise or one of his hallucinations appeared that I wasn't entirely expecting it to. It's sort of like when you're playing a horror video game and you get to the point to start recognising what hallways and what dark areas that the monsters are going to definitely appear, and eventually you reach a familiarity with the genre in general, in which nothing really surprises you. So, I suppose what I'm saying is, unfortunately, this film really doesn't do anything new. Which is arguably a strange criticism to hold of a film that is probably not trying to do anything new, as it is an adaptation of a novel, and a novel that's already had an adaptation of it. So I suppose if they're not trying to do anything new, the question is, do they do it good? Well, I can't speak to how well the adaptation's going, and I can't speak to how well the remake is, but I can say that, as a standalone film, it is a very well polished, and a very, very enjoyable film to watch. One of the most enjoyable parts of it is it doesn't really rely that heavily on jump scares, don't get me wrong, there are a couple, but it more relies on heavily on how actually creepy Pennywise is, which I loved because, as I said, it's the kind of horror aesthetic that I'm really into. Pennywise is super creepy, and a lot of the visuals in the film are just absolutely breathtaking. I would probably watch this movie again just to get a closer look at some of the visuals, because they really are done really well. I do warn that this part is slightly getting into spoiler territory, I'm not going to be giving out huge spoilers, but you'll definitely be able to draw inferences, and so definitely if you don't want any spoilers at all, this is a spoiler warning. And so, moving on to the story-wise part of it, I did think that it was somewhat predictable, even from the perspective of someone who's not read the novel and not seen the original film. It just felt like most of the characters in the movie had too strong a character shields, and when you start to realise that there's not really much of a likelihood of harm coming to many of the characters, it just starts to undermine just how scary Pennywise is when you realise that there's a room full of children that he's trying to kill, and most of them are probably going to be okay. I suppose I've just been spoiled by Game of Thrones' willingness to kill off literally anyone. That said, it definitely doesn't ruin the movie, it just felt sort of that halfway through the action scene towards the end, I started to feel like there weren't really that many stakes. Aside from that, I'd say there were only two real negatives in the film, and I think they probably both came down to editing issues. One of them was that there are, to begin with, four or five bullies, and you only really see what happened to three, with two of them just disappearing entirely. I don't know where they went, but I would have liked to see them get their comeuppance, or really just any closure on where they ended up in the story. And secondly, there was one scene towards the end of the movie where all of the, and this is a spoiler alert big time, so spoiler, all of the children are descending into the well, and one of them gets split off from the group. It doesn't really show how this happened, which is sort of weird because previously in the house above, they show how all of the kids get separated, he's just suddenly not with the group, and it doesn't seem to be implied that this is due to Pennywise trickery, it just felt like there was maybe a scene missing that maybe we're going to later find in the DVD extras. Aside from that, It's, or more of It, is an extremely enjoyable movie that if you're a big fan of horror, you'll probably enjoy because they've really nailed the spooky aesthetics, 
And if you're not really that into scary movies, you'll probably enjoy it anyway, because it is a visually beautiful film with a good storyline that is predictable but still definitely enjoyable, and isn't really that balls to the wall horrific gore fest with jump scares everywhere that turns off most not horror fans from horror movies. If you've watched and enjoyed Stranger Things, I highly recommend you see this film in the cinema, because it really feels like they were going for a Stranger Things vibe to it, and I'm not just saying that because it has a shared actor. The entire style, art direction and pacing really does give off a Stranger Things feel, so if that was up your alley, it will definitely be also. And so, with all of that said and done, as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, I have been and still am, Grim Grindle.